In the past month, a lot of things have happened to me, both in my art practice, the art world, and my personal life, as I literally got into a car crash, which you all will see later in this video. And this might be a weirder start, but in an effort to be more personal, I want to tell the story about how two years ago I was discriminated against, or basically discriminated against, in a scholarship interview. And I tried to share this story in a video last week, but I actually took it down because I wanted to reframe and rephrase. Here it goes, I just want to get this off my chest for good. The reason why I want to share more vulnerable stories is because I always thought I was so open with everyone online, but I realized after kind of re-watching some of my videos that everything I've talked about has been through the art itself and so there's a distance between myself and y'all and I want to close that gap but essentially I have very great privilege of coming from a family that actually immigrated to the United States because of an educational scholarship which my grandfather received and he actually went to USC so this old Korean guy in the past went to USC and because of that I had the opportunity to apply to a scholarship called the half century Trojan scholarship and it really would have helped myself and my family if I was able to get that scholarship because I am like on financial aid and stuff. And of course, like I'm privileged enough to be able to pay for college. But duh, a scholarship would help. Like who doesn't want a scholarship, especially one that was literally, I think, $10,000 a year. So I apply and it's actually two rounds. The first is a written application. And if you're in the top, I think, 10 or 15, you get passed on to the interview round. In my written application, I wrote about my GPA, my resume base, which was good. She was clean. And I also had an extra section where I submitted portfolio pieces that I created in my art to just give clarity on how art fits into my educational background, what I want to do with it in the future. And I also talked about queerness in all of this because I thought that it was an essential part to what I was saying. And not only my personal story coming from non-heteronormative spaces, but also wanting to advocate for those who grew up in similar positions as myself. And so that was all key to the application. And you want to keep that in mind because once they moved me on to the interview stage again this was half century trojan scholarship and the entire panel of 12 people i think 10 to 12 people all white by the way were alumni from usc and they were all looking at me on a zoom call to see if they wanted to give me the scholarship money me as an asian kid there's not many people with grandparents that came from usc so off the bat simply on race i was the diverse candidate adding on sexuality on top of it is just a whole other ball game that i don't think they were prepared for and it was so evident that they did not read or check my written application beforehand because y'all they literally during the interview were asking the standard questions of tell me about yourself etc and then halfway through the 30 minute interview they started asking me about this art piece i had that had the f slur in it and they explicitly said the f slur multiple times in ways both unrelated and related to the art piece itself they asked me to define certain terms and my first reaction was oh my god this is so awesome because i get to talk about how these definitions fit into my own self-concept i get to educate these individuals who may not interact with with people like me on a daily basis so they get to hear my story the questions about queerness what it means if it's still a slur like the etymology of it like they were so like some of them were giggling at me some of them were laughing to each other it looks like on zoom others kept to themselves and were serious and were taking me seriously but that went on for about 10 minutes of the interview portion or a substantial chunk of it and so in the end i did not get the scholarship which is fine i'm 1000 percent sure the people who got it were deserving and also just as qualified if not more qualified than myself to receive the money with that being said i think discrimination comes in both explicit and non-explicit forms and this was thankfully one of the rare occasions in which my identity actually more explicitly affected my day-to-day -day, which was kind of literally actually crazy babes Getting to the point of where I'm telling this story, mainly, is because afterwards, I reached out to the committee and said everything I just told y'all, exactly what happened, how I felt, and how my mood shifted from being positive, educating these people, to more negative, because I realized that no other candidate that fit the heteronormative ideals, which I'm assuming were most of the people who I was quote-unquote competing with would have received any of the same questions as myself anyways i reached out to them they eventually said that they were going to look into it they were going to have quote-unquote more dei like training for the people interviewing they were going to have a standard set of questions because there weren't a standard set of questions before that were enforced and another point beyond me just being vulnerable and wanting to share with y'all something that happened to me in the past i'm being very very optimistic and taking the words of the institution for what they are and so if my experience because I spoke up, eventually helped someone else who 
comes from a similar background as myself in the interview and gets them the scholarship, then I'm really glad that I did speak up. And if y'all are ever in a position where you are able and willing to to advocate for not only self but for others, try your best and just speak up and see what happens because if you don't speak up, then it'll just stay the same no matter what. So that's just an experience I wanted to share um, because it's been honestly like weighing on my chest for a while now and I just wanted to like send it out into the universe. Please do not take any action after hearing this story. This is already dealt with. This was years ago. I'm trying to open up because I feel like y'all are a safe space. This is my story. Please do not email anyone. Do not reach out to anyone. That is not what I want. I already went through this whole process. It is exhausting to go through that process emotionally. Do not want to go over it again. But I'm sharing this because I want to be a bit closer with y'all. So on to more lighthearted things. I eventually visited my friends in Laguna. They go to Laguna College of Art and Design, LCAD. Yup, fun times over there. And so I drove all the way down from LA to see them and this is what happened. Annie, where are we, babes? Um, Laguna College of Art and Design in Laguna Beach. Slay. Like, oh my god, tour, tour, tour. Um, okay. Wait, I'm so excited. Piper Banks is here. Oh my god, Piper is here. Piper Banks is here. Slayer. Is this a video? Yeah. Hi, I'm Piper. Uh, I'm a student in my last year at LCAD. LCAD. And I'm painting a snake right now. A snake. <laughs> so good. Let's get a little close up. Hi. Yeah, this is just everything. The way the girlies just need to follow and support, babe. <laughs> Sorry, it's gonna be like a, like a two minute clip. <laughs> I can't even see if I'm taking a good photo. I feel like I'm gonna be able to whatever. I feel like try not crooked. Try crooked? No, try not, not crooked. Oh, try not like that. Oh, it's a little crooked. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, that's that's so good. Okay. Um, this is an interesting content. Okay. Okay. Guess so what's in here? What's in here? Triangle? <laughs> oh, good. Wait, honestly, it does not look good on this camera. I'm so sad. Hold on. We're doing a bag haul, y'all. Shapes. Shapes. Wait, I feel like they're gonna want to know where the bag is. Another triangle. Um, is it really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why it's so good. Oh, 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 oh. It smells oh. really bizarre. <laughs> like bizarre. Mmm. <actual. laughs> this smells like, like, um, like someone spraying perfume in a club. Oh, that's not awful. No. Well, that's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> As y'all can tell, I'm in the studio right now and I'm trying to flesh out a drawing that I did in class. Um, this is the drawing, babes. I'll do a close-up in a sec. But it's just a vertical composition of me eating myself. But instead of like me eating like fingers, I'm eating like mini versions of me. The body is contorting, the legs disfigured, babes. But in the end, it's like a beautiful kind of grotesque image. That's what I'm going with right now. Um, so we'll see. If you're curious, the paper I'm using is a Canson watercolor paper, but it has a really nice weight and texture to it, which is why I like to do drawings on them. Another thing is I'm currently organizing stuff for the Art Talk Collective. I literally have been flopping so hard on organizing it because my brain has been so scattered with personal projects and just like past gallery stuff that I just wrapped up. But now that my schedule has simmered down a bit, I'm definitely gonna go full throttle on seeing what I can do with this Art Talk Collective. So I'm gonna organize some graphics for that, some decks to pitch to people, and we'll see what happens. But that's the vibration for tonight, babes. Okay, goodbye.
I do not want to go to the studio right now, but I'm forcing myself. Oh. Welcome to a week in my life, a day in my life. Girl, I don't know. Right now, I need to move this painting over to the side so I can start a new painting. I just bought a huge canvas roll from Blick that was like literally $90. Six feet tall by six yards wide. So that's a lot of canvas that's primed already. Personally, for me, that's worth it. And with a third of that canvas roll, I'm gonna redo Goya's Saturn eating his son because I have the cartoon character and I have a representational version of myself that I'm gonna have be eaten by the cartoon character. And girl, I'm tired. I can't even explain my art right now. I'm literally just like gone. I was out partying so much these past three days and like I don't even stay out late. I stay out till like maybe 12 o'clock, lift home, grab a meal, and like sleep at two after like showering and doing my skincare and stuff like that. But I don't party like ever, and I wanted Halloween weekend to be fun because my senior year. So I decided to party the last three days, and I'm going through it. It is 4 p.m. I just got to the studio. I did go on a run earlier today, but I wish I was more productive. So that's why we're here. Um, so I'm gonna get started on this damn painting, and that's enough chit chat. That's enough chit chat. I just took off my sweater, first of all. I need to take her off, I'm getting hot, babes. And second of all, I hung up the canvas. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting for some reason. I was like a dumbass and didn't like properly measure. I guesstimated. It's giving like when you're studying for a test the night before and you wanna do things correctly. You wanna, you know, measure, be precise, but then you're like, actually babes, it's just fucking common sense. Like, I'm fine. And then you go to bed and you take the test and you fail it. So that's exactly what happened here. I literally just guesstimated. But babes, I think I actually got a passing grade because she's looking good. She's looking good. I'm gonna try to use this like fluorescent pink blick paint that I have and water it down in this little plastic cup. I'm doing the underpainting in acrylic because first of all, I'm super curious in how fluorescent this pink can get on canvas underneath oil paint. Second of all, it's a lot cheaper to get a base coat down as opposed to using oil and Camsol. I just purchased some Camsol the other day and it was literally like 15 bucks for a small container. Not doing that, ordering her online, but until she gets here, I'm gonna just use acrylic and water. And then after I get this base coat down and get the sketch done, I'm probably just gonna get some coffee. I'm gonna get some motherfucking coffee because I'm so tired. I'm too tired for this. It's about an hour and a half later. 
I've literally just been looking at this damn canvas for the past 30 minutes, just staring. Just staring at it because I literally, because I thought I could work on it more, but I need to wait for the layers to dry. And I'm confused on if I should just, just go home. I'm so beyond tired. Obviously, I know it's because of like going out so much, but babes, like this tiredness is making me feel a bit depressed. At this point, it's not even about art that's making me like sad and frustrated. Babes, when someone doesn't text you back and you've been like talking to them, it makes you want to literally crawl up in a ball and just cry. And that's where I'm at right now. But this is my karma for leaving other people on red. So I get it. I get it, babes. Like, what goes around comes around. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna grab some coffee right now and maybe I'll come back to the studio. Maybe I won't. I probably will. So I'll see y'all very soon. I'm unwell. As you can see, I'm recording on my phone now. Like I, I can't even be bothered, babes, to pick up the damn camera. I just got my coffee. And babes, I feel so much better. I feel so much better. I'm in my Valley Girl era. Also, y'all are probably wondering, like, what are you doing? Like, when you go like, oh my god, I love that. Or when I go like, oh my god, babes, like, what? Um, it's just a vibe. It's just a fucking vibration that I'm on. The Scream Queens and a Roberts the Elle Woods type, like the typical, honestly, usually white femme icon because those characters have so much confidence and are so fierce and I want just a tad of that. So that's what goes on my brain when I go like, yeah, I love that babe. Mm, no. Also, those characters are so severely underestimated in their own respective movies and storylines. For example, Elle Woods, duh, underestimated. Um, but she persevered. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to painting. I think the acrylic layer is dried already, so... Ugh, I don't want to do this. I'm gonna do it though, I'm gonna do it. Okay. I literally just painted for like two hours. I have no idea what's happening. This damn paint looks like a fucking tangerine. Um, and I'm not even sure if it's a good way or a bad way because I'm so tired, I'm so hungry. I have not eaten since lunch and I need to go get some fucking food, some energy in my system before I have to write like an essay, finish a five minute presentation for Monday, and then, and then apply to residencies that are also due tomorrow. There's a lot of things to accomplish tonight. And I did not do enough on this damn painting. Ugh. But conceptually, I think it's there. So I'm excited about that. That's it, that's it. What's up, y'all? I just spent an hour and a half in the studio. It's about 12, 10 a.m. right now. I have a 9 a.m. tomorrow, but that's okay. Cause I got this booty done. I got that damn booty done. Um, I added a purple dark background and I'm gonna have like these pink fluorescent flames coming up. It should be a nice addition, I hope. And the things I'm thinking about right now are compositionally, I don't love how there's two holes here. Symmetry is cool, but this is just a bit too much. So I think instead, when I have the pink flames as an addition, 
the smoke from the flames is gonna just break this arm slightly to make it so that these aren't as distracting when they're two together. The biggest tip that I ever learned from someone was from Miss Sam Linguist. He's literally a fucking genius, y'all. He's literally a genius. And he was giving advice to one of my friends, Annie, who is a more classical painter and has since moved away from it. But at the time it was just talking about, if you have a classical painting, Renaissance style, very, you know, very realistic, well painted, and you just add a square, a modernist pink square in the middle of it, suddenly everyone who was just looking at Renaissance paintings looks at that artwork and thinks it's genius. Absolutely stunning because in that context, adding a pink square in the middle of a painting is crazy. It's crazy. And so someone doing that is just like above and beyond. You have a bunch of like modern artwork and that pink square is same old, same old. We've been there, done that for them. But then you add like, let's say an elbow. The elbow is realistic. You have it there and it breaks a certain plane or two. Suddenly you're making a callback to like the Renaissance period, a classical time. And adding that into the modernist, everyone there is like, oh my God, that's crazy. And so I'm trying to understand where my painting fits in all these contexts and what moves or gestures I can make to push it into other realms. So it becomes formally more interesting. So that's what I'm trying to do here with the mixture of the cartoon caricature of myself and the more realistic classical body. And then having this gestural background with like a graphic kind of design-ish flame, I think it's gonna push it into like a, just a, a crazy realm that I'm hopeful is gonna be good. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. That's it for tonight, y'all. I'm gonna go home, eat a little snack, go to bed, and then wake up for my 9 a.m. That's crazy, that's crazy. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>
it was fine. But then they ended up like moving their car forward, obviously from the collision, and then hit the car in front of them, who then got like a lighter tap. But still, all three of us were involved, and so we were just kind of talking with each other on the freeway, and we got really lucky because. It was right underneath an overpass, and so there was actually a mini sidewalk we were able to go on to talk, which was really helpful because if it happened like in the middle of the road, that would have been like a disaster. Because right after my car stopped working completely, and the worst part is, is that I was on my way to my sister's performance. My sister sings. Um, she is a really great singer. This is her music. You should check it out. It's a lot of pop, a lot of like R and B ish vibes. It's very good, and I haven't seen her live perform in over a year. And so I was on my way there. And that's when that crash happened, and so I couldn't see her performance, which I was so mad about. The song I was listening to when I crashed was "Is It Over Now" by Taylor Swift, and like, babes, it was over now because that car is done for. I'm just like, yeah, I'm fine. I have some back and neck pain. I didn't realize it was from the crash until like, literally like an hour ago, because I'm usually just sore from something, because my body's so weak nowadays.、Um, I need to take like supplements and stuff, but anyways. Yeah, I definitely have like lower back pain, and it's like a bit shooting up my neck, which is fine. I'm lucky that like nothing more happened to me, and like the airbags weren't deployed or anything. It was just a scary moment. This was just like the I'm trying to think of it as like a wake up call to drive even more safe. Like there are extra precautions like I could take by maybe giving more distance when I'm riding with someone in traffic. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of a mess, and I'm kind of like existential about it because. I hate, I hate, hate, hate one disappointing people. That is my biggest fear. Two, it's been a very long time since I've been in a position where this is gonna sound so like bad, but it's been a while since something was like my fault, like completely my fault, where I actually caused someone else like physical and maybe mental stress of like hitting them. I wasn't gonna tell this originally because I'm like, you know, what if like people think like I just can't drive anymore? What if people think that I'm just telling this story for like. A level of sympathy, which I'm not asking for at all. Like, oh my god, I want to just like get this off my chest and just like release this out, this this energy out. Anyways, I'm in the painting studio. I'm gonna add some extra layers of paint by sanding some things down,、um, glazing on top over it, and just try to get my head into a more painting and creative mood. Cause I fucking need that right now.、Um, yeah. So that's that's that. Okay. Goodbye. In these last couple sections, in these last couple clips, I'm finally finishing up this painting. I've been working on this painting for about a solid week and a half, and for me, that's actually a long time because I probably spent almost 30 hours on this painting. Usually, it only takes me around 20, 15, 20 hours to complete, and that's because I usually like conjure these up pretty quick. This one, I had to be a bit more meticulous in the composition. I was trying to be more. Careful about the formal elements I was putting, where I was adding pastel accents, where I was adding some sanding accents. Thinking about the material depth versus the pictorial depth, so maybe the flatness in which I have the hands is sanded down super small, but then the thickness of the paint of the flames that are behind it is materially large, and that contradiction is what I'm particularly interested in. For this one, at least, I'm not really sure. In the end, I was really just cleaning up the lines, making sure things were a bit more, you know, punchy, a bit more fun. Because this painting actually demanded lines to be cleaner because of how busy it was. I'm still not sure if I made it too busy or if I should just say like fuck it and make it busier. I think it's gonna be end of video until the reveal at the end. But before I leave, you know. Follow my damn Instagram at Brett Paint. If you like this video, like the video. If you have a fun comment, critique, or joke to share, comment down below. And if you like me, my art, or want to follow my journey as an art student in LA, you can subscribe. It's a fun time here, and I think that's the end of the video, y'all. That's the end of the video.